Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I want to talk to you about video games. I know, shock horror considering the channel, but more specifically I want to talk to you about sacrilegious video game moments. Now, there are a fair few video game franchises out there that you basically look at and go, I know what I'm getting from this package, which makes it all the more surprising when developers for some reason will turn around and say, yeah, even though it's not broke, let's fix it anyway. There are some things you just don't change. Like me, having hair, for example. Hurt myself with that one. Anyway, with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight of the most sacrilegious video game moments. Number eight, the ride and switcheroo, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Now say what you want about Metal Gear Solid 5 pulling a protagonist bait and switch at the end of the game, but at least players were able to spend 99.9% .9 of the game thinking that they were playing as Big Boss before discovering they were actually his doppelganger, right? Well, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty saw Hideo Kojima execute a far more upfront and devastating rug pull. As after the opening Solid Snake starring Tanker prologue sequence, it was revealed that the player would spend the rest of the game as his effeminate wet blanket of a stand-in, Raiden. Kojima went to enormous lengths to keep his switcheroo secret, such that fans were shocked and infuriated to learn that they'd have to spend the remaining 90% of the game playing as someone other than Solid Snake, and then instead they were playing a dweeby, whiny substitute. Though Sons of Liberty remains a highly acclaimed entry in the series, Raiden's role as the protagonist will always be divisive because it frustratingly robbed players of another chance to play as Solid Snake. Thankfully, Snake returned as the main protagonist of Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, and in the very same game, Raiden was reimagined as a badass cyborg ninja. So you know what, everything did kind of work out well in the end. Number 7. Samus's Butchered Characterization – Metroid Other M Though 2010's Metroid prequel Other M actually received praise for its gameplay and presentation, fans were extremely unhappy about some of the fundamental changes made to protagonist Samus Aran. While there wasn't anything inherently wrong with depicting a greener, less battle-hardened Samus, the game's writing touted all of the nuance of a brick to the bloody face, with Samus largely depicted as an immature, giddy young woman who couldn't have been a further cry from the fierce warrior that fans knew her as. In Other M, she's an over-emotional ball of angst, far too concerned with what the men around her have to say, and it's ultimately tough to believe this childish individual could ever become one of the galaxy's toughest bounty hunters. In fact, it's so bad a portrayal that many fans simply choose not to accept this story as canon. Number 6. Plot Twist – Shelby is the Killer – Heavy Rain Quantic Dreams is, 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 is Heavy Rain is a mostly enthralling interactive thriller in the vein of David Fincher's Seven, but like most of David Cage's cinematic games, it's also pitted firmly against its own muddled storytelling. And there's no better example of this than in the game's mess of a final climax, where it's revealed that one of Heavy Rain's four playable characters, Private Eye Scott Shelby, has actually been the origami killer all along. But this is more than just being merely a silly twist ending, because it transpires into sacrilege because it violates the game's own rules in an incredibly reckless way. Heavy Rain is concerned entirely with giving players the freedom to act out their own cinematic narrative, whereby divergent story paths can be taken and the characters can even die before the game's climax. But revealing Scott as the origami killer directly contradicts a sequence the player themselves has played through earlier in the game, a visit to an antique shop which would make it impossible for Shelby to be the killer. But of course, this scene is rewritten at the game's end, revealing that we've been unknowingly following an unreliable presentation of events, and as such, that left many fans extremely disappointed. This didn't so much feel like a clever subversion of expectations as it did more so a cheap moving of the dramatic goalposts in order to stop players from guessing the big reveal. Number 5. Sam Fisher Gets Recast – Splinter Cell Blacklist Iconic video game characters are often defined by the instantly recognizable performances of their voice actors, and that's certainly true of Splinter Cell's Sam, who for the better part of a decade was voiced by legendarily badass character actor Michael Ironside. But with the release of 2013's Splinter Cell Blacklist, Ironside was replaced by Eric Johnson, with Ubisoft claiming that this was a result of a new performance capture technology requiring a more physically capable, age-appropriate actor to play the part. Fans were understandably miffed, and though Blacklist was broadly well-received, many nevertheless felt that the game was lacking without Ironside's soulful and gruff performance. 
Ironside later revealed that the real reason for him not reprising the role was due to undergoing cancer treatment at the time. Now, while it may well have been Ironside's choice to keep that information private, it's fair to say that fans would have been decidedly more sympathetic to the decision if they'd known the full context. With Ironside now thankfully recovered from his illness, many are hoping that the actor will be brought back for the next Splinter Cell, whenever that may be. Number 4. No Single Player Campaign – Call of Duty Black Ops 4 with a franchise as popular as Call of Duty, it's impossible to please everyone, but of the series' several dramatic shifts over the years, including a controversial change to blockbuster sci-fi, nothing received more blowback than the decision to remove the single-player campaign from Black Ops 4. This was the first entry into the series to release without a story mode, which, in conjunction with the game's focus on Battle Royale mode Blackout, seemed to suggest that Activision was far more concerned with chasing trends and money than giving fans what they wanted. Developers Treyarch only made matters worse when they defended their position by claiming that many players didn't even bother playing the single player, a fact that is admittedly backed up by statistics. But for many, it simply boiled down to them perceiving that they would be receiving less content for their money. Amidst concerns that Call of Duty would be phasing out campaigns in all future installments, Activision mercifully reported that this wasn't the case, and last year's Modern Warfare reboot thankfully launched with a traditional narrative-driven story mode. Number 3. Killing Desmond – Assassin's Creed 3 Though in most respects the Assassin's Creed franchise is a more well-oiled machine today than it ever has been before, many of this franchise's appeal began to rub off with the conclusion of the third game. Assassin's Creed 3 wrapped up with the demise of Desmond Miles, the series' real protagonist who experienced the genetic memories of the assassins that we played as in the game. But many were led to believe, and indeed expected, him to become a modern-day action hero sooner or later. But Desmond's promise was cut short when he sacrificed himself for the sake of humanity in Assassin's Creed 3's ending. Ushering in a new era of Creed games which actually pulled back from the animus which has really been the most intriguing and unexpected element of the series' mythos. Though the franchise has clearly outlived Desmond, unceremoniously offing him left an incredibly sour taste with many excited to see his evolution continued. Boo, the crowd hates that boo. Number 2. Pick a Color, Any Color – Mass Effect 3 for its first two installments, Mass Effect was respected as one of the deepest and most artistically accomplished AAA video game franchises of the 21st century, but all of the plaudits and glory were promptly jettisoned into orbit with the release of Mass Effect 3, a game which Bioware promised would pay off a trilogy's worth of storytelling and character choices, but as it turned out, rather than offering up the granular, hyper-adaptive ending that fans were led to expect, Mass Effect 3's climax boiled down to a choice of three colors for each of the game's prescribed endings sequences. Fans were upset enough to vocally express their outrage at Bioware and even consider the legality of being misled so egregiously, resulting in the developer eventually releasing an extended cut DLC ending which was still met with ire from many quarters of the fanbase. This is arguably the moment which killed the franchise's goodwill with fans forever, and given that the follow-up Mass Effect Andromeda was both a critical and commercial disappointment, it's safe to say that that's not recovering anytime soon. And number 1. Dante's Pointless Redesign – DMC – Devil May Cry It's tough to think of a more controversial AAA reboot in recent memory than 2013's DMC, a totally pointless attempt to reimagine the Devil May Cry series despite most fans feeling that the original iteration still had plenty left in the tank. It was clearly a cynical attempt to make the game more appealing to a younger crowd, best exemplified by the widely loathed redesign of Dante himself. In addition to ditching his iconic silver locks, the new Dante was also younger and slimmer, which combined with his edgy clothing and snark sense of humor caused the fanbase to dub him Emo Dante. For many, the new Dante was just too unlikable to front the franchise, and though DMC was ultimately still a fun action game worthy of its forebearers, the decision to give Dante a pointless makeover still remains a major sticking point. After the game proved a commercial disappointment, Capcom stopped development on any follow-up starring emo Dante, ditched the character outright, and finally restored the original Dante with last year's brilliant Devil May Cry 5. 
And there we go, my friends. Those were eight of the most sacrilegious video game moments. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below, as well as any other choices that you might have for your own list of this nature. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about video game moments that change things, and sometimes it didn't work out for the best. But you know what, my friend? We should never be afraid of change. You should always be striving to make yourself out to be the best possible human that you can be. And sometimes you will try, and sometimes, unfortunately, you will fail, but never give up in trying to change yourself for the better. Sometimes you have to have setbacks, sometimes you need these in order to gain perspective, and that perspective will allow you to see where you need to go next, see where your energies are being spent, and possibly redirect them with the help of friends, family, and professionals in the support industry if you need them. I wish nothing but the best for you. Now go out there and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.